Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. Welcome to my garden. So to continue with my goal of adding more perennials to the garden, and to push the limits, this is my goji berry. Now you've seen me plant it, prune it, and take care of it in the house, and it's been hardening off over the last little while. Unfortunately, before hardening off, it got attacked by aphids, and that, that was a pretty nasty attack. So we treated for the aphids, we still hardened it off, it looks a little sad right now, but I've got, I've got pretty good confidence that this will, will bounce back. So, <clears throat> my goal this year was to create kind of a perimeter garden of perennials, and having grapes as kind of the mainstay to cover the back fence and to make it look really nice. Now, when selecting a location for a perennial, because it's going to be around for a lot of years, you want to make sure that you're not shading each other, you're not fighting with each other, or you can control the situation. Now, uh, as you can see, goji berries don't cast a huge shadow, but they can sucker just like a raspberry. So what, you want to make sure that it's in a place you can control. Now, I've selected a raised bed that I constructed this year, because that'll give me some physical parameters in which I can kind of control the situation but it'll also help me get a jump on the season because these raised beds, uh, they point southeast, they get a little bit more direct sun in the, uh, in the summer and in the spring, and that warms the soil nicely. Now what I've done with this soil is this is a number of types of compost, a little bit of peat moss in here, and a good heavy mulching with uh, coffee grounds in the mulch. This is just dethatched grass and in the fall we'll, we'll add some, um, some leaves to it. So all we're going to do, uh, if you're putting uh, any of these into kind of your native ground that's a little more compact, you want to uh, you want to do the hole about twice the width of the pot. Because this is beautiful controlled uh, soil, I'm only going to do it just enough for the pot because the roots won't have a won't have a hard time pushing their way through. <clears throat> so goji berries are known for their health benefits. Now those health benefits are are uh, are largely unverified, which is which is fine, um, but you know they've got a lot of antioxidants in them, a lot of vitamins. I think there's A, B, C, you know, a ton of good vitamins. Uh, one of the things you want to watch out for, though, is uh, consumption rates. Uh, there's a couple of uh, reports on the internet about <clears throat> people consuming large quantities of goji berry tea and having issues. Now, this is typically in conjunction with um, prescription medications. So if you're worried about it, talk to your um, your your physician before. But for me, it's it's not a whole lot, and uh, I'm kind of you know this is an interesting one to grow. Now this summer it will be in the same bed as my one of my uh, melon plants, but that shouldn't be an issue. We can uh, direct the melon to go other directions. <clears throat> so with this trellis. Um, the grapes will be behind, the goji will be in front, and the, you'll notice that I do have this staked up already. And the reason why I have this staked up already is because the goji was falling over. <clears throat> it's kind of a woody vine, and I kind of expect over time the main trunk will get stronger uh, over years and not need this, this trellising. <clears throat> if it does require a more permanent solution, it's very close to the grape trellis, so I can build something out to, to, to support it in the future. Goji berries are very, very hardy. I was uh, very impressed to find out how hardy they were when I initially did the research this last winter. They're hardy all the way to zone two sometimes. Now this particular variety is uh, from Sas Goji Power in Saskatchewan, so cultivated in Western Canada, and it's quite hardy. What all we're gonna do, and that's just the glass from the, I gotta stand up to do this. The crushed glass from our fungus gnat problem this winter. I decided not to try to recoup it. <clears throat> so two of these goji berries have made it to their new homes. One in Ontario and one just down down the block. And you'll notice that whoa, this is root bound. So we're just going to plop that in there gently. Try not to disturb the roots too terribly much. And bring the soil back around. Then, just because we've shocked it, I'm going to give it a light organic fertilizer. This is just a, a kelp based fertilizer, a little 222. Just
just to give it some some nutrition. Water it in deeply, and then we'll remulch. <clears throat> remulch the area with our grass. And what this grass will do is it'll keep the evaporation from the the soil down. It'll also feed the earthworms who will come up and eat this and it looks nice. So this will really help keep a long-term health of the soil and building the soil so that this goji berry can be happy over time. Now it looks like I have to straighten this out. That shouldn't be a problem. Just Yep, yeah, there we go. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it very much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. If you'd like to continue the conversation, please join us on Google Plus and Facebook. Those URLs can be found in the description below. Have a great day.